Okay, so before I talk about any of the keyboards I want to mention, we have to talk about certain background information, like switches. So traditionally, mechanical keyboards have a little spring-loaded mechanism underneath each keycap. That's our switch. Depending on the type of switch you use, your keyboard is going to feel different. If you play a lot of video games, you might want a linear switch like Cherry MX Red or Gatoron Red switches. The reason why these switches are good if you plan on doing gaming is because they feel very smooth and there's a lack of tactile bumps. And if you don't know what a tactile bump is, that's basically the resistance you feel when you press down on a switch. An example of a tactile bump that would be obvious is when you press down on a button and you feel something click into place. On the other hand, if you're not into gaming or you like that tactile switch feel, you might want to buy something like a Cherry MX Brown or Razor Orange switch. If the name didn't give it away, it has a notable bump midway through the keystroke when you press down on it. Some people just have a personal preference for this, and in theory, it could help you for your typing accuracy. Now the third option is pretty polarizing for a lot of people. These are clicky switches. These are switches like the Cherry MX Blue or Razor Green switches. Some people just absolutely adore these switches because they love the clicking sound they make. Of course, on the flip side, a lot of people hate these switches because of that clicking noise. So out of these three switches, which one's the best? Well, the answer to that really depends on what you're doing, but also your personal preference. Another thing to keep in mind is that these aren't the only switch options available. In fact, later in the video, we're going to talk about two other switch choices that you could get. Before we get to that though, there's other information that you need to know about a keyboard before you buy it. The first thing you want to think about is keyboard size. These sizes are labeled by percentages, with 100% being a full-size keyboard. Now, if you find yourself using your computer for a lot of different tasks, a 100% size keyboard might be the right choice for you. That's because a full-size keyboard has stuff like the numpad, the arrow keys, and the function row. Now, if you're only planning on gaming, that might not matter, but it might matter if you're doing stuff like 3D modeling or spreadsheet creation. Now, one of the cons of a full-size keyboard is very obvious. It's large. So if you have a limited amount of desk space, I wouldn't recommend this one. The other issue caused by this size is that it's harder to travel with. That might be an issue if you're going to a LAN or for some reason you decide to take it to a local coffee shop. Now if you don't need a numpad but you still want the function and arrow keys, the 75% keyboard might be the right size for you. Being 25% smaller means it's more compact. Sometimes these keyboards also have a little volume knob which is pretty cool. If that's still too large for you though, there's also the 65% size keyboard. These boards get rid of the function keys. But they keep the arrow keys, the delete key, the page up key, and the page down key. These boards are meant for gamers, but it's still trying to compromise by keeping some of the keys you're familiar with. But if you're really serious about gaming, you might want to get a 60% size keyboard. These boards don't even have arrow keys. The goal of this board is to maximize desk space so you can move your mouse more if you're playing games like FPS games. I wouldn't recommend these as a main keyboard, but if you have a lot of money to spare, you could have a main keyboard and then have this one as your secondary keyboard primarily for gaming. Enough about background information though, let's get to the real reason you clicked on this video. What keyboard should you buy in 2024? Disclaimer, all these products are going to be linked in the description below. These are affiliate links, so if you click on one of these, I earn a small commission if you buy through them. This comes at no additional cost to you, and it helps support the channel, which allows me to continue creating content for you. But enough about that, now for the keyboards. So the first keyboard I want to talk about is the Drunk Deer A75 Rapid Trigger Mechanical Keyboard. What's Rapid Trigger Technology? Well, it's a relatively new feature some keyboard manufacturers have started implementing into some of their products. And what it does is it allows for mid-motion repeats without compromising actuation points, which enables faster response times than conventional keyboards of the past. Basically, it more accurately measures your key inputs by accounting for how far you've pressed the button. So, in theory, this technology could give you an advantage over other people in a competitive game, depending on the type of game you're playing. But keep in mind, a keyboard on its own isn't going to make you good at a game you're bad at. Now let's talk about the switches. So remember at the start of the video how I talked about the three traditional mechanical switches? Well, ignore all that, because this keyboard doesn't use any of those switches. Instead, it uses magnetic switches. And these offer a smoother typing experience due to the lack of physical contact between parts. They're also supposed to be more durable, lasting twice as long as regular switches. So around 100 million keystrokes. These magnetic switches are also why this keyboard is able to have rapid trigger technology. Another cool feature that rapid trigger technology makes possible is adjustable actuation distance. What that means is you can change how far you have to press a key for it to register. So this allows you to fine tune the keyboard to your preferences. As for its other features, the Drunk Deer A75 is a 75% size keyboard. It also has a volume knob, RGB backlighting, and connects via a USB-C cable. 
Price-wise, the Drunk Deer A75 is going to cost you around $130 USD with keycaps. Or alternatively, $119 USD without keycaps. Buying without means you'll have to buy your own keycaps separately. Which could be beneficial if you have a style of keycaps you just really like. I'll link a keycap option in the description below, but at one point in time I'm going to make a whole video about keycaps, so stay tuned for that. Now if you buy the keyboard with the keycaps that come with it, there's two options. Those are ABS and PBT keycaps. Those are two different types of polymer materials that they use to make the keycaps. So which one of those two should you buy? Well, that comes down to personal preference for feel, sound, and looks, but I do know a lot of people like PBT more than ABS. Of course, you're going to have to do your own research on which one you think you might like more. Or if you're watching this in the future, I might have an entire video dedicated to keycaps. If I do have one of those, I'll be sure to link it in the description below. Speaking of content creation, I also have a blog at thecodecomet.com. It's a website where I write articles about tech-related topics. At the time of this video, I currently have 10 posts up, so be sure to check them out if you're interested in tech. At the moment, all the posts are related to hardware, but I also plan on writing about 3D modeling, coding, software recommendations, and even gaming. Of course, what I write depends on whatever you guys are interested in, so let me know in the comments below. And be sure to check out the website, The Code Comet, after the video. Let's get back to the keyboards though. Now, Drunk Deer isn't the only option when it comes to rapid trigger technology. There's also two other choices I want to recommend. The first choice is the Razer Huntsman Mini 60% Analog Keyboard. This keyboard uses an analog optical switch that uses light to detect how far down a key has been pressed. This technology allows for similar rapid response times and actuation point adjustments, just like the Drunk Deer, just using a different set of technology. So you might be wondering which one's better, analog optical switches or magnetic switches. Well, I hate to sound like a broken record, but that all comes down to preference once again. So, if you have a chance to try these out in person, I definitely would. As for the keycaps though, the Razer Huntsman Mini uses double shot PBT keycaps. And being a Razer product, of course it has RGB lighting. If the name didn't give it away, it's a 60% size keyboard. This means it's ideal if you want a lot of desk space, or need something that's portable. At the time of this recording, it's priced at around $130 USD. Which is thanks to a sale, but normally it's around $150 USD. So if you're looking for a small keyboard that has rapid trigger technology or are just a fan of Razer, this might be a good option for you. Next we have the SteelSeries Apex Pro Mini Hyper Magnetic Gaming Keyboard. This keyboard, similar to the Drunk Deer, uses a form of magnetic switches. It has 40 levels of actuation point adjustment, and it allows you to fine tune the sensitivity of each key individually. So as an example, you could set the WASD keys for a super quick response time for your movement in a game while also having other keys set to higher actuation points to avoid accidental presses. Not only that, but this keyboard also features a unique 2-in-1 action key function. What that means is you can program two separate actions to one key depending on how far you press it. This could be useful for things like walking and sprinting in a game with one button, or putting crouch and prone on the same button to save on keybind space. Just like the Razer keyboard, it's a 60% layout, perfect for travel and small desks but lacking some functionality keys. But if you really want those functionality keys, they also sell a larger full-size version with a numpad, function keys, and an OLED screen that lets you easily check your actuation points at a glance. The full-size version will cost you around $199 USD, while the mini version comes in at around $179 USD. That's pretty expensive for a keyboard, but keep in mind these keyboards are outliers that have relatively new technology that makes them different from older boards. Now not everyone wants to spend a fortune on a keyboard, or even cares about cutting edge technology. Sometimes you just need tech that's cheap and gets the job done, especially if you're on a smaller budget or you're just starting out and building your first computer setup. So here's two options under $50 USD that you might want to consider if that's you. The first one is the Cooler Master CK552 Full Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. This keyboard might not have the latest cutting edge technology, but it still packs a punch with Gatoron Red mechanical switches. These switches offer great response times, making them suitable for both gaming and everyday tasks, even if they aren't cutting edge. Looks wise, this keyboard features standard RGB backlighting with individual LED control and various lighting effects. 
Plus, the brushed aluminum design adds a touch of class to your desk setup, so you might be able to make your budget setup look a little bit more expensive than it actually is, especially considering it's a budget-friendly option at $43 USD on Amazon. The other budget option I want to talk about is kind of a mouthful. It's the Havit HV KB487L. That's its official name at least. I believe on Amazon it's just called the Havit Mechanical Keyboard now. Because turns out it's hard for people to remember your product when it's just a bunch of random letters and numbers. This entry level keyboard also utilizes red switches. As for its size, it has a slightly compacted 85% size layout. Which means it isn't that much smaller than a full size keyboard, but it is slightly more compact. Now, the keycaps are the thing that really make this keyboard stand out. It has colorful keycaps made of PBT material, which gives it a really interesting aesthetic. Not only that, but it also ditches the typical gamer RGB lighting, opting for a cleaner, minimalist look. This might not be for everyone, but I think it would make a cheap setup look a lot better. As for price, you can get this keyboard for around $43 USD. Now maybe you want something in between the budget options and the cutting edge options. For those people, I'm going to recommend the Keytron V1 75% wired mechanical keyboard. If you're really interested in keyboard customization, this is a great entry board. Unlike other boards, it's fully customizable from the inside out. That includes the keycaps, the switches, the plate, and even the case foam. Not only that, but you can easily remap and reprogram the keys to get whatever layout, backlight effect, or shortcut you want. Now to start with, the keyboard can come with either tactile brown or linear red switches, but it's hot swappable. What that means is that you can easily hot swap the switches with the majority of 3-pin and 5-pin MX mechanical switches on the market. So those switches would include the Cherry and Gatoron switches we mentioned earlier, but also other switches like Kale, Panda, etc. And if you're not a hands-on person, don't worry. Changing out the switches doesn't take any type of soldering. As for the keycaps, the keyboard comes with double shot TBT keycaps with south facing RGB. Being customizable is great, but it also has one other feature I want to mention that I haven't mentioned throughout this video yet. And that feature is the fact that this keyboard is compatible with both Windows and Mac OS. And it allows you to save two different button layouts on the keyboard if you're switching between the two. I know a lot of people aren't gaming on a Mac, but hey, if you are, this might be what you're looking for. And if not, maybe you just want a keyboard that works on a Mac that's similar to a keyboard on a PC. So there you have it. Those are some of the keyboards I would consider buying in 2024. And just because I didn't put a certain keyboard on the list doesn't mean it isn't worth buying. I hope this breakdown helps you find what you're looking for. And if you enjoyed this style of content, let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to suggest any tech topics you'd like me to cover next. It could be anything, even more keyboards. There's tons of stuff on the market that I couldn't cover in this video. But anyways, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe for more tech content, and check out my website for a sneak peek at future video ideas.